Hi, I'm Seamless, oh, yeah. and today is Saturday, which means it's time for another Seamless Live. I think this is 16 or 15 or 14. It's not 13. And it might not be 14 either. Okay. I don't know what number yeah. it is because I can't count. Um, I'm here today with Audica. Um, and here, all three of them are in this love uh, over over here because inverted. Yeah, that's where they are. Yes. All right. Introduce yourselves. I'm Max. I'm 16 years old, and that's about it. <laughs> uh, I am Marty, and Max is actually my brother. I am 20 years old, and um, uh, that's it for now, I guess. Uh, I'm Skyler. I'm 21, and I am not related to these guys, if it didn't look like that already. And uh, yeah, we we make music, neuro kind of stuff. They make music, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be links in the description to all their stuff and goodies. And uh, on the the to, the to do list today includes um, a breakdown of one of their tracks that they'll be doing for us through extremely complicated Skype related streaming things, which. Um, kind of work. We spent a lot of time making sure that they kind of work. So today will be kind of good <laughs> in that regard. So um, it'll be pretty good. It's it's fairly interesting stuff. Like it's it's pretty neat, base related, awesome processing coolness. And um, if you had caught the Wednesday tutorial, which was the sound design, sound design request tutorial for Cone Sound type sound, these guys were the ones who helped me. Uh, they actually gave me a project that was something that they had done that was similar. So that's them. And they actually inspired a whole new like world of resampling for for me even on uh, the latest how to bass was all about that so that's kind of cool. Um, so uh, yeah, like how how was it that you guys came to be a group? Like how were you friends? How did you meet? Uh, let's see here, I think it was back in high school. Um, Marty actually was on the uh, he's on he's on the golf team and. Um, I was playing some some techno on the tee box. Dead mouse. Yeah, some yeah, it's a dead mouse, and uh, and and Marty actually knew who that was, and like nobody nobody knew who dead mouse was, and I was like, oh geez, wow. So <laughs> then uh, then Marty actually I think showed me FL Studio, and uh, ever since then we all we all kind of made we all just kind of made our own stuff for couple of years really and then we decided hey what if we just tried to like work on stuff together and yeah that's pretty much how that went. what kind of a like dynamic do you guys have like who works on what largely or is it just like you guys both just sort of have ideas and then it adds up to like a big thing um yeah i don't i i would say it's a combination of those things just you know like i was saying um you know, we had always worked on our own stuff before we became, became Autica. And so, like, we were kind of just used to working on things ourselves. But uh, we all kind of like the neuro sound, and we all make projects um, that are in that realm. And we usually kind of work on a project by ourselves for the most of the time. And then, like, when we're satisfied with things that we've done, we pass it on to somebody else who can give it a fresh ear, like uh, from a mixing perspective, from a, from a compression perspective, and new ideas, of course, too. And sometimes, like for Masada, if, if, if people have heard Masada, like Marty had an intro from, you know, like two years ago that was just sitting in his hard drive. And I had this chorus that was there for in my hard drive for a while, and we decided to combine the two, and uh, it worked out for a pretty good track. Nice, very nice. Uh, what what are your guys' like like main influences and like people that you like? You mentioned that you listen to Dead Mouse. Is that is that a big thing? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat That's related, uh, I think. Well, well, actually, the yeah. All right, Max, you want to say something? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're talking. basically influenced. We play a lot of video games, and so we get a kind of a state that uh, each video game is kind of a different state, and so we make music for that, 
or like kind of like, like that, that feeling, right? Yeah, right, like we like we think of like an image, right? Um, like for instance, uh, Shackled. If, uh, if if you hear that track, that was well, it's like one of our first. That was actually our first release with like an actual record label, Xenomorph Recording. So that was kind of cool. But, but like that track, we thought of this image of like a guy that was like taken taken in in like as a hostage right and he's he wants to break out of his cell and that's pretty much like we try and build that image so but it's all like video game like kind of nerdy influence but that's that it is what it is we love video games so we make music that like nice. kind of reminds us of those video games yeah yeah I, I, as far I, I, as I artists that. go yeah. though that like influence us as well i mean yeah like to be honest, Skrillex actually is what got us into the sound design uh, realm, right? Because like we listened to Dead Mouse and like techno, and we had no idea that uh, we had no idea that like that that could even be done. And then we heard Noisy after that, and like that even more. So we started pursuing that sound. Good. I like that. I like that answer. <laughs> cool. Yeah, she must approve. I'm I'm very much a fan of the noisier, noisier stuff. So okay, we're getting awesome video quality here. Apparently, um, yeah, super so laggy. See, before before we get into before we get into introducing the um, the track that you guys are going to break down for us, uh, does anyone in the chat have questions for these individuals that together add up into? Such connection, such bad. Bro. Yes. You have a question. You now you now have told me that you have a question. However, I would like to know what your question is. <laughs> um, I guess I could turn my volume up. Where did your name come Where from? Yeah, so Odeka. What's Where up? Where's your name oh, come from? With that. Uh, that was actually. <laughs> there wasn't too much to it. We wanted to come up with something that sounded cool so we literally just like got a board out and started writing a bunch of stuff down and then um yeah that's pretty much how that came about nothing cool. it, there's no like deep underlying meaning to the name <laughs> so no. whoa i got i got loud all right what do we got what other, what other questions we got Twerk to a uh, do you track. play that's not a question do you play instruments well, i'd be be a good question for you guys. Uh, I've played guitar before. I've gotten into electronic music. I guess usually rock. I destroyed everything. Sorry. I've always played the electric guitar and acoustic, so I built up uh, what's it called? Musicality and things <laughs> that go together. So long structure. Yeah. That kind of stuff. And that's basically it for that instrument wise. Instruments are good. Uh, I've played drums since I was about eight, and me and Marty pretty much had a band before we started Autica, and we kind of jammed out and everything, and that's basically how. Was it a punk band? Uh, uh, more like the rockish side. I don't well, know. No, that's rock. It's more more like Avenged Sevenfold. It's a than me- like. The bell, more of that hard stuff. Metal, metal band. And so then because of, uh, yeah, and then because of dubstep, that felt so much harder. So I, uh, we got interested in See, now we producing have, it. Now we have a new, a new point in the graph that trends how people who were in metal bands just become dubstep producers. That's just sort of like the evolution. <laughs> of, yeah, uh, yeah. Of music, because like, yeah, I, it's I, funny. That's pretty much what happened to me. Like I am in a metal band, and I. I, although I kind of started off being an EDM producer, I just wasn't any good at it back in the day. And then I went and did metal. Holy crap. Been there. I, yeah, went, uh, I went and did metal, and then I came back to it, and then I learned things. Now, now I can do it. Yeah. But I, I definitely think... agree that, like, dubstep, like, if, you're, if you are a heavy metal person and you're into the heaviness of the sound, then, like, EDM and more electronic-driven hard music can just get so much harder than anything, like, related to the sort of normal rock guitarish stuff can at least right yeah it's funny too because like you go back to all the rock that you used to listen to and like 
it doesn't satisfy your desire for like the the heaviness because like the drums aren't hitting hard like as hard as what you're used to and like certain basses and like the guitar just doesn't provide the same satisfaction as like a bass that's just like hitting at the same time with the drums yeah so it's kind of funny when you go back it's like yeah it's weird now is this incredible high-pitched noise coming from you guys is my question i hope not you're right i mean i guess hold on i can test this real quick test i didn't do anything um i guess i can't actually test that i can mute you hold on where's the uh i like let's go over here yep totally you guys that's weird but that's okay oh shit didn't want to do that because of that what is it oh you know what it might be it was at one what are you because of this yeah maybe okay here we just turned out we just turned off our it's like a Marty's laptop was on next to us. Maybe that's oh. what it was. It doesn't appear know. to be gone. Good. Good job. You have solved the problem. Oh. All right. Does it, is it, right. Does it sound better? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. We don't. Yeah, we have a bad camera and microphone, as uh, Bushy has pointed out. Yeah, not it's the, functional. Not the greatest quality. <laughs> no. What? Um. So you guys, you guys use the FL Studio, right? Like all of you, primarily. Oh yeah, that's like the only thing we've ever used. So if we uh, if we tried to make it make a track and anything else, we probably wouldn't know what we're doing. I know that feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's kind of. What is your? Like, that is loud. Someone said. What is your go-to synth? Um. Ooh. Wow, that's a that's a good question. Actually, I don't know. I, Three times oscillator is pretty good. I mean, because we, because like with the sounds that we're making, it's like we're just working with basic waveforms, right? So it's just like saws and squares. So, like, you can, the nice thing about three times oscillator and all built in FL plugins is like you can, you can automate things better than an external synth, like massive or whatever. Like, you can't. Basically, you can't do the pitch bends as precisely as you can with a built-in uh, plugin because, like in the piano roll, for instance, you can you can actually start bending things around in ways that you couldn't with uh, yeah a normal a normal synth. Yeah, that's that's an unfortunate, wonderful thing about FL Studio as a slide notes is because it works with you know FL native stuff, but not anything else, and apparently yeah. Um, VST3 plugins, if the devs that made them, like when they ported them over to VST3, enabled such functionality, then they could take advantage of slide notes, but that's not like an FL thing. Like it's a, it's a, the, the plugin dev have to, has to like uh, open up that handle for FL to be able to like transmit or something or something. Because the slide notes aren't, aren't actually MIDI information, it's specific FL like data for FL plugins. So that's why it doesn't work out for other synths. At least so I've I been see. told. That's what I've been told by the FL guys. Yeah, you know all the engineering behind it. Yeah, That's good to know. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think somebody had asked for our drums if we if we make our own or if we use samples. And uh, it's uh, we use samples as the as the root sound, but um, then beyond that, there's a lot of modification that goes into the drum. So, um, actually, the track that we're going to break down, the bass sound is actually created from a kick drum. So, um, we like to play with lots of different drum samples and then see what kind of cool snares or whatever we can use, we can make. But yeah, really, it's nice to find a, a nice, like, sample pack with nice acoustic drums or something and then you can you can make them sound really interesting after Superior lots of drummer. distortion or compression or whatever yes so uh let's see is vengeance literally just a load of audio samples um i think is vengeance a load of audio samples uh, yeah, yeah it's just a vengeance it's a sample pack that's Very all it's up. all there is 
people so, people yeah. like 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 doo 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 biscuits here has says that it ha- he has a question for me I, I, but you need to ask I me a question. question you need to like let, letting me know that you have a question is useful but you can include the question in the same in the same post uh, <laughs> blast it over <laughs> whenever i try to add a drop to my song it doesn't seem to fit evandia asks why well i have hundreds of ideas as to why it's it's not exactly super cut and dry being able to be just like I have a I have a, I have a not drop and now I have this other drop I'm gonna put them together and then they're just unrelated. I mean, there's only so far you can take the whole complexro thing before you just <laughs> don't have the same song anymore. But um, I suppose I could put this question to you guys: like, what what do you consider when you're when you're writing like rhythms and like uh, a kind of arrangement in your tracks? Like, how do you approach that? Um, I don't know. We just I guess we just go for whatever is aesthetically pleasing i mean whatever sounds cool pretty much right we don't really have a we don't have like a set template that we approach tracks from so we don't like we don't limit ourselves to any sort of structure when it comes to yeah when it comes to any sort of rhythm but i know max likes to use the uh the gross beat plugin quite a bit to like get different ideas of how you can chop rhythms it's kind of just a, it's an easier way to like kind of create some creativity um, without having to think too much about it. But Word. yeah, gross beat text are pretty dope because you can take little chops of whatever drum, like what you, you have a drum loop and you have gross beat over it, you can record that and then take little things that comes out of that and like throw those in later, like re- Versus or various like glitches and whatnot, so it's also a really it's also a really cool way to get little blips of audio that sound interesting. Most deaf. It appears that um, Max is now Sam. Just so you're aware. Max Sam. Is Max is now oh, Sam. Sam. <laughs> uh, is it necessary to use vocals, which contain only vowels, to make growl stuff? Uh, someone. Okay, so. Uh, this was a question about Vocodex, about how I typically tend to use the aw, the, the aw yeah samples from FL, like just kind of what I go to, and I, I really only, I really only do that just because they're there. Like I'm lazy and I don't want to record my own like uh, modulators. Although I have started to do that recently for some of my um, more recent tracks and examples and stuff, I have done that. But um, if you're making like the easy, it's almost it's pretty much cheating. Like it's the easiest way to make a vowel sound. It's just to vocode something with you going ah, yeah, 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 into like a mic, and then you have your vowels <laughs> out. Like that's you don't. That's really all you need to do. Like it's not as it's not going to be as clean or cut well as if you were doing like EQ modulation or super duper filter coolness, which is which really is how that kind of stuff ends up though. Like because what Odeka had done to do the cone sound thing on Wednesday was um, what they had done band passing it. And then effectively notching it using the phaser inside Harmer, and then band, and then b- b- more band passing and probably another notch. I forget. There's a lot of filters, lots and lots and lots of filters, and they all interact in such a way that, at some points in the sound's existence, they move together and apart and around in such a way that it creates those sort of vowel feelings, but they're not recreations of existing vowel vowelly vocal recordings. It's just like an actual. Uh, not procedural, maybe procedural. It's di- it's difficult. It's more difficult. Put it that way. Vocoders make things easier, which is the legend yeah. of how I guess Skrillex went about doing his thing because he uh, was trying to do the, no- the noisiest stuff with vocoders. I guess that's rumor. I don't really know that, but um, guys, there's nothing <laughs> behind me. There's not a single thing behind me, Just so you know. My room is empty. <laughs> Everyone keeps saying seamless. There's something behind me. I was saying like whales or something. Oh, someone asked if we use sound goodizer. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <We> do? <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know. Like sometimes if you just, if you throw sound goodizer on top of things. It makes it sound good. <laughs> I mean, it, it basically adds a nice, uh, a nice amount of compression to a sound. So if I'm, feeling lazy or whatever and i want to just 
throw sound guys around it, I guess. Yeah, but not really, not really too much. No, I mean, remember sound guys is like, yeah, remember, remember you that can't really, you can't really see what's going on. <laughs> so I don't, no, you don't have I don't know. It's not, it. just not the most that sound good thing. Is a group of Maximus presets, like the A, B, C, and D. They're they're they are literally Maximus presets because if you open up Maximus and look at it, there's a section that says Sound Goodizer presets because that's what they are. Sound Goodizer is basically a bunch of like pre-made Maximus presets that you can throw on stuff that sound kind of good. They're fine. I used to use it a lot on uh, kick drums for metal tracks because it seems it it always ended up that like it was the exact proper kind of compression, especially the first one, the A preset was the right kind of compression to apply to it. <laughs> a metal kick to get like fat low end and sharp high end, which is what you want in a metal, a metal, metal kick. I didn't have to even EQ it. It was just like, here's a kick drum, sound goodizer, done. Like it was, it was good. <laughs> I couldn't really do it on anything else though. Like I put, it, put it on like any bus element, it didn't seem to do a good enough job, but it's functional. It's just not very controllable. Yeah. Can't really see <laughs> Sam. what so. Sam, Sam you're, is blowing up. You're Sam, dude. I don't, I don't know what that means. It's a, it's an in joke from a previous stream where there was one named Sam who was lost and is now found. It goes again through you, <laughs> Sam too. Okay, so, okay, I get it. So Sam is actually the lost person that is now part of Attica or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of crazy super duper in jokes that occur on these uh, live streams. Like I don't, I don't know if you guys heard about that um, <laughs> Alberton <laughs> Alberton live thing that happened recently. That was that was uh, that was us. That happened here. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need to make an account. You need to make an account. <laughs> sign in. Probably watch a few of these streams. Be good. You can. They're all, they're all on my YouTube. You don't need to watch them on 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 Justin. They're all there. Okay. Uh, that someone, sounds good. Someone had mentioned in, in the chat if I'm going to release the track that I made um, on the last couple uh, like older streams. And the answer to that question is yes. So, good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Let's uh, uh, last question. I guess we could do one more question. Then, we, then we'll get to doing breakdowns. Uh, when you make automations in FM, uh, I'll ask how to base... Uh, randomly, do you know it'll be their final result? Okay, so for FM stuff, I typically know what I'm doing when I draw them. Like, I know how certain shapes sound, and if I have an idea in my head, I know how to do it. So that, that'll be largely the case. But, like, for example, in the last How to Base, when I was doing the Harmer thing with all the resampling, that was almost completely random. That was just, like, except for except for the idea of the bandpass modulation, because I, I, kind of, I kind of did what um, uh, Skylar had explained to me with the idea that it kind of follows the pitch movement. So I, like, I did, I did that. And, but then everything else was just like off the charts, just craziness. And then I kind of reined it in as it got, as I got listened to it, I'm like, Whoa, this made it sound really weird. So let's make it not do that. And then got that sort of thing. That's kind of like how I do every sound is like, except for the, the primary FM modulation or like a filter cutoff thing. Like I know what I'm going to do with that, but for all, like for things like the, the bandwidth of a, of a bandpass filter or the pitch movement or, um, time stretching, all that kind of stuff. I do all that just randomly, and then later I'll listen to it. And I kind of tweak it to make it fit in a certain direction. Did you name this Sam? Yeah, we we use an equalizer. Someone asked if we use an equalizer. Sorry, I had to answer that question. Yeah, they, <laughs> the um in the sound design tutorial they did on Wednesday, they uh had used the equalizer as the thing that made the band pass. Because you can make all the filter shapes using the EQ2. And uh, people use that to automate it. And uh, who, the guy, uh, Frequent, his name is Nolan. Um, he uses uh, the EQ8 in Ableton to do the same thing. Like, he does lots of EQ modulation and stuff like that with operator sounds. So, and, like, EQ modulation is everywhere. Like, people do that pretty much forever. And I think it's because once you have, like, a really good handle on filters then like and you know what certain shapes are like filters are basically just like purpose-made eqs that's what they are they they and, or rather you could say an eq is a purpose-made filter so like they they're kind of the same thing so i feel like having an eq and modulating that is a bit more versatile than just having a filter in my opinion cool yeah, all definitely. right let's do let's do the track 
So okay, so for this, I'm going to go back to this guy. That's going to be a lot of white screen, so that is. Um, oh, yeah. All right, so now you guys, right, I need you to switch over to screen sharing. Screen sharing, yeah. Yeah. Prepare yourself. Whoa. Oh. All right. All right, so that's working. Don't I'll shoot my tracks. Going. Bam. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, Justin TV. Zomboy, the most creative person on the planet. That that comment is immortalized forever in the stream. <laughs> also, we could take All a right. moment to sort of look at how in the related live channels, the one that's always on top is Gay Life TV. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's fun. All right, wait a second. Is, is, okay, is the project on the screen? Uh, yes. Try doing Okay, things. so... Like All right, well, what we're going to have to do is, first of all, turn up our mic just a little bit or point it towards the speakers so you guys can hear it a little bit. But let me explain. I'll just do a little demonstration of the sound. This is the, this is the main bass that's in the track that we posted earlier called Spud. Um, Spud. So the reason we called it that is because it's like an... It's, it has the eggplant picture, but a spud is like a it's like a tool that that digs roots out and stuff, and it has a bunch of like ripping. It made us think of like a bunch of ripping sounds and textures. So that's what this little thing does here. It's, it's just a bass drum. I'll adjust the mic. I'm gonna have to turn up the volume a little. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. So we can kind of kind of hear that. So what I'm what I'm looking at here when I see this, a, um, I, I noticed that you're using automation clips and event editing, which I think is interesting. Um, if 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 you guys haven't uh, seen that before, the sort of the stuff that's going on inside that uh, one channel, that's event editing, and that was the method of automation that was available to you before automation clips. Right. Yeah. I mean, I Some guess it it. Does, I could have just. I could have just edited the volume. That's what this is editing, the volume of the kick. Right, so let me just show you what is actually being automated here. It's actually the pitch of the kick. So that's in this edit events thing here. And what's happening is if you if you actually listen to the track, you can hear how the song goes. Dun, 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 dun. So um, that bass line is actually created in here, so. And, yeah, so, like, um, actually, yeah, it's actually playing through here now. Right. So, all those textures are being created, um, number one, by this modulation of pitching. When you pitch a kick drum, you, you're making all these different harmonics, actually, um, when you do that. So um, here is the effects chain, right? So let's take a look. Basic EQ is not really doing anything. The most important thing is I would recommend, if you guys don't have it, getting camel fat. Um, definitely a dope plug-in. And basically... The things that's creating all the textures is this bit crusher here, right? So when when the kick is actually hitting, um, it's it's making what bit crushing does, I believe, is it just kind of actually decreases the quality of a sample, right? And it gives it these interesting like high end frequencies, and, and then little bits of distortion and whatnot are also assisting in creating that sort of ripping sound that you hear throughout all of the track uh, within Spud. There's also a free plugin called uh, Transient, which is really cool. Uh, what Transient does is um, it actually looks pretty straightforward. It will either increase or decrease the uh, attack on your drum. So if you, if you move this up or down, you'll be able to make things hit more or less and you can also make them hold out longer or shorter. So it's really useful for not only things like this, it's kind of a, a weird use of this plugin, but 
You could also use it for snares if you wanted to like make a snare like ring hold out longer, or if you wanted to make like a, a snare's like tail, like the noise tail hold out longer. Mm -hmm. um, it's useful mm -hmm. for stuff like that, uh, for sure. And let's see, what else do we have on here? Um, it's pretty much some Maximuses, and that's just old. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. It's actually, yeah. it's really simple. It's just, just a kick drum. So we're, we're again, just kind of looking through kick drum sounds. So there you go. This pack is actually free. It's called, if you go uh, on freesound.org, there is oh, a sample dinner. pack totally called Crispy kick. Dinner Kick Drums or something like that. Oh, they I have some, have that. oh, that's what I that we used for this. Uh, um, so, yeah. But anyway. Um, what what kick one? Which question. one was that? The, the full name of it? What's that? What was the full name of that kick? Oh, the full name? Yeah. Shoot. Uh, 131815, Crispy Dinner, Kick. Or you can see it on my screen, I believe. Or maybe not. Uh, 131815 is the numbers that are in, uh, that are in front of it. <laughs> cool. I have, I have that kick. Yeah, so that's like the original kick sound. It's just been modified a wee bit. Interesting. Interesting. So, so um, but yeah, that's just hmm. being pitched all around. It's it's slightly uh, time multiplied here, so it stretches it out to create more of a transient. Um, I so without that, I mean, it's different, but a little shorter. But I mean, you could yeah really stretch it out and get some cool sounds just from that. Yeah. Um, For some reason, the Skype screen share is freaking out, and I don't know why. Um, oh, here, let me, me just break is it working. It. Um, turn uh, turn it off, turn it back on again. It's the sharing. <laughs> okay. All right. Hmm. Nice. I think I might actually try doing that to this kick in a second. Just to see if I can get a similar sound, because like they give me they give me a whole bunch of cool ideas. We never okay. I never actually had a, a collab set up with Savant. Like he just said he wanted to do something, and I agreed. And he said to be continued, and then that was like three three or three months ago. All right, good. S screen share is correct. Oh look, it's like a never-ending portal. <laughs> Bring up I fell, damn it. That's dope. I'm breaking everything. Okay, so this works. You're gonna open up one of the other ones. Yeah, I was thinking maybe I could open up another project cool. here or something. While you're while you're doing that, I want to try real quick to screw around with this kick. So you had see the bit crushing. Yeah, the thing. the first thing. Yeah, bit crushing, and then the a little bit of uh, transient stretch on the on the multiplier. Yeah. And, uh, I could think I could do that with Maximus, so but here's a cool thing about um, bit crushing. So my understanding, if if bit crushing just does what the name implies, then it uh, changes the bit depth of a sound, and the reason why that ca that causes distortion is because when you have a, a like like a 24-bit sound, like for example, I have uh, this here, and it goes through this, like this straight line all the way through. But if I were to change this line to stairs, and like did this, this is basically reducing the bit depth crazily, and then that happens. Okay. So that's kind of what uh, bit crushing. You can do that with like this. Is the, I'm doing this with the fruity wave shaper right now. It's interesting. And then the transient stuff I could do with Maximus. That's uh, hardcore, not hardcore. Don't do anything with hardcore. Hardcore terrible. Uh, I could just go to Maximus and then not use any of the, the multi bands 
and then just do something like that or like, like that. My fun, the favorite one of mine is just, let's do that. And then you also time stretch it a little bit. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Intriguing. Yeah, it's so, so. There you go. Sounds really dope. <laughs> wow. You got you got another you track going. That thing around, you got yourself a bass line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You also had different kinds of distortion engaged at the same time. <laughs> What's this? What have we here? Oh, uh, this is a <laughs> this is a, um, a forthcoming track uh, on Caliber Music. It's called Infiltrates. It's actually in. It's on YouTube somewhere. Um, it's in Dark Step Warriors uh, dub plate showcase, I think. I just wanted to talk about one other, one other sound, I suppose. But I'll turn up the volume of the track a little. I'll bump the volume. <laughs> That, like, so, second uh, to last sound right there. So that was, um, this bass sound actually is, I, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, th I think we're good. Yeah, you're that sharing, you're sharing. good. Here, I could, uh, I could post a link to that track if we have it up somewhere. Let me, let me just see if we have it up somewhere and I'll, uh, let me, let me get that you do? Yeah. Okay. Gonna, I think gonna, we have it uploaded. I'm going to. Take that off screen for so a people will be able to listen to it a little early here. Check out all our private shows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Maybe we don't have it uploaded. <laughs> all right. I guess we don't have it uploaded. What? It's okay. Yeah, basically, I think it was Max. You created this sound, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, this this <laughs> this main sound right here. Um, yeah, maybe you should tell them how you made that thing. All right, how I made that was basically a guitar fuzz. You know how you put a guitar cable in amp? You put it halfway, and you hear that guitar fuzz. Basically, I got that sampled and resampled it a bunch of times and it sounded awesome you know <laughs> process it a bunch of times distortion compression whatever yeah you, well, you don't remember how you made it specifically that was, that, a, that was a long that was, time that ago. was it yeah just, just compression or here distortion. Um, <laughs> um what what um that the, near the end of that phrase that you played there's a really complicated kind of warbly thing going on. What was that? Oh, I think that was. Uh, I think that Marty was, Marty yeah. had made that. That was FM8. Um, let me hear. It. I forgot. Oh, yeah, what has that. Oh wait, that's not not, it. not that one. That's enough. Uh, this that's one. Here we go. The, the oil leak base. <laughs> nope. That one. I think it was right before that. Uh, oh. All right, I don't know what you're talking about. Right there. That. Right there. Right before oh, the oil leak. Right there. That one. What was that? That one? That is a small chunk of audio from a sample that I had created using Harmer. Um, I think I can actually find the, the sample that I have 
or the sample from what the, like the root stem. It's just a, a little chop from it, right? So it's not like right. it's not like a one little thing that I that was designed specifically for this. It's just a random thing that we had made. And I think <laughs> It lives up to his name. It lives up to his name. Yeah, uh, that's what that's from. So I, I made that using Harmer. Basically, that's just kind of what the, the same method that we showed in the tutorial, where like all that, like, <laughs> I don't know, however you want to describe that, like that, all that like weird movement is from the phaser. Right, so that phaser is a really great tool for creating uh, interesting movements. So if you use it in a track like this, it's kind of like a, you can hear it in some of Skrillex's tunes too, like uh, his old, some of his older stuff, like a rough neck bass, full flex. Um, there's there's some like transition monstrous sounds, and that's kind of where that's inspired from, right? Because like I liked how like in between the phrases, like right before the kick hits, there's like this monstrous transition warbly thing and then it just slams back into like the main bass riff and I thought that was cool. That's kind of like where that's inspired from, but um, yeah, go Harmer. <laughs> go Harmer indeed. You guys in your, in your movement on. So What's just, that? For, just for a quick second. Um, I'm gonna I want to demonstrate a little bit about what we're talking about with the the phaser stuff, just in case people who have not seen these videos don't want to go fishing for it. Uh, we'll just do a, a really really fast example in my FL so we can actually hear things properly. <laughs> Although we're getting we're getting enough out of what? Why is this two bars? How did I do that? That's okay. Um, <laughs> I, was, I, had, I was saying I was saying a thing about stuff. Oh yeah, like. Um, you guys are definitely showing off some very, very interesting things, and I dig it endlessly. And like, I mean, I, it would have never occurred to me to use to use Harmer's phaser in such a way, had you not shown me what you had done. So kudos, lots of kudos. Oh yeah, man! Create some, create some really cool movement. <laughs> Be an E, because why not? E is fine. It's not a slide note. It's a slide note. There it is. <laughs> Let's go a little bit faster. A little bit faster. Like laser fast. But come back down. Uh, new, new note. How long did it stay up there? Fine, you can do that. That's fine. And now make it square. And now make it a Reese. I make it an interesting Reese. Distort it. That's from one project. <laughs> <laughs> Broken audio. Fixed audio. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, probably don't want to go that hard because I want to make a sound that's somewhat similar. That's lovely. Oh, hey, Mandorley's here. What's up, Mandorley? <laughs> Who, what? <laughs> Man Mandorley's in here. Who's, oh, he's dope. He makes some uh, makes some rather funky glitch hop beats. Does he? And he he remixes one of them. Sorry. He's dope. I like dopes. Is Man is Mandorly his artist name? Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. Where I'm always he? here for you. 
Okay, so... Shit, I'm all in here for you. <laughs> <laughs> so right here I have a I have a thing. Uh it's only one measure long, but whatever, it'll be that'll be enough to get the point across. So um what they had done in, what they had done in their first tutorial that they showed me was they didn't do what I do, which is I do like units and stuff and whatever and harmor, but they actually only used the phaser in this example. They had only used the phaser. And uh if I turn it on <laughs> you get this. You get this immediate sort of just well was basically a very big very like multi-pole comb notch filter. That's kind of what that is, and it moves. So then you turn speed off, so it doesn't move. And then if you, min 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 if you manipulate the width, <laughs> weird shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> Now I have the the mix all the way on so that the the um, effect of this the effect of this is uh, very obvious because you can see like the, where the 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 darkness lies. It's dark. It's dark. And uh... now um, you could just auto just automate that. Um, Though I, I I found that I can you can also automate the offset because it does more or less the same thing. You can basically dictate it to move itself. It's more like when if you're not going to automate the width, then that makes it a more traditional sort of notch filter. Except that it's like some weird sort of infinity box where when it goes too far down, it just comes back up the top because you can be like because you can do that. And this is pretty much the crux of the whole the, the whole technique is just this, like this aspect. Then you just do it again and again, resampling a bunch of times and adding in different stuff and crazy pitch and relate whatever effects. And what I had done in the how to base on Friday was I also threw in uh, time uh, changing in inside Harmer. That's scale. That's not time. That's actually. <laughs> Automate this a little bit. And then like. You can do all kinds of weirdness with that. And then you get all just fucking wrecked sound is what that is. And lots of good stuff can happen. They obviously have more experience with it because of that sample that they had made that created that uh, base right before the oil leak one. It was pretty impressive. So, and this is not something that I yeah. have done a lot. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool technique, and then like it doesn't sound like super cool by itself, but when you put in a track with a bunch of other stuff going on, it doesn't sound too bad. Like it yeah, sounds like, like it fits almost. Yeah, with, with any any other resampling I've ever done with my normal techniques, I always. I never just kept the whole phrase. I never resampled entire phrases and kept the whole thing. Because if you do that, then the sort of the chorusy movement becomes apparent, and you don't. It stops being a sort of individual effect and more of just like a a long change, and then that takes away the special nature of the sound itself. So when you're playing it sparingly, it um, it's more it has more impact in doing that. So I, I always just chop up. And also, like if you don't have the beginning of the sample or the end of the sample. You're just playing like a middle part of the sample, then that you're already in the middle of modulation. If you have no context for that modulation, then it's even more of a surprise to your mind and your ears. You're just not ready for that weirdness like that soon, you know? Like, you know what I mean? Not me. Right. Yeah, it's like. You're in such. Yeah, it sounds tight. Yeah. It's cool to have like all that movement because it, it's almost like it's. Like it's making things flow right into the next part of the track. Like something that's moving around. It helps like with the flow of everything quite a bit. Rather than just like a blast all the time of audio. Something with a nice character and it makes it flow with the drums better. Yeah. If you look at my track, uh, Third Watch, which is like my only glitch hop track, um, I did that that's pretty much how I I organized it, is I had my main bass, which is a vocoder-based uh, bass, 
And then I have my resample bases, which really only showed up as fills, like base fills. And it added like that kind of special spice to the sound. That was how that arrangement worked out. Uh, you have another project open? Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I had some like sort of sound design ones What's opened. This? This is um, this is another track that's unreleased right now, or that's where this bass is coming from. Oh, this is this but, is the um, like I have all the I have all the steps kind of sort of saved. It was just a whole resampling process. Nice. But I think I had changed the original bass line from what it was, so it won't sound quite the same. But I'm trying to see. Shit, go. man. Shit. Yeah. Is, is, that, is that loud enough? Dude, do me yeah, a favor. Dude, do me a favor. Record that and send it to me just so that everyone else can hear what that sounds like for real. Okay, hold on. Uh, yeah, I did, I think, actually. Here, I'll just export this real fast. I'm just like, dump it in it. Dump it in I am audible. I am audible. <laughs> It's funny, I keep like, I keep turning up the volume to play our stuff on here, and then I forget to turn it down, and your voice just like blasts into the room. <laughs> yeah. I, I keep uh -huh. <laughs> All right, hold on. Uh, I will send you, oh, how to do, drop in Skype thing. Yeah, you can just put it in the, in the chat, yeah. and I'll see you. Uh -huh. All right, here we go. There it is. Save it. I'll put it on desktop. Saw Base Production oh. 2. Yeah, that's the name of the product. Yeah, I had a, I had the original bass line in Saw Base Production 1, I imagine. <laughs> but I don't know where that's at right now, so I just... Well, you have better that. control of your projects than I do. I wouldn't have been able to find an old resampling thing like that if I, if I, if I wanted to. Like, damn. Yes. I started getting in the bit of like all in one folder rather than just projects everywhere, I guess. Because I like to be able to look back at techniques that we have done in the past in case I forget or something. Right, here's the sound. Let's put this in here. Wow, it's really quiet. Oh, yeah. I must have had. Hold on, let me. Let me uh... <laughs> It makes a little more sense now. I can hear it. Man, good job. Yeah, that was uh, that was another one more we used uh, times. <laughs> we just used uh, three times oscillator as the root sound. So, um, but it really. That is super dope. Yeah, it's just about like that harmer resampling for all that movement within the in the bass creates a nice effect. But it's not too complicated beyond that. Like right, it's just it's just saw waves, um, and then an interesting series of notes. I think that's actually what becomes the hardest part once you get the technique down is thinking of what notes actually sound good. Yeah, like in. When when you're actually pitching things around, so sometimes you can just say, "All right, you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make a bunch of random pitches and hope something good comes of it." I mean, if you're not feeling particularly inspired, mm. that's the easiest thing to do. Or you could just you could think of what you want your bass thing to sound like, and then try and plan it out. But usually, it doesn't turn out. So I mean, it doesn't turn out the way that we want it to all the time. But guys like Fletcher, they actually think of it. And then they do it, which is really impressive. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine if you do this enough, eventually you'll start to remember things that that work for particular purposes that you have at the time. And like that's kind of that's sort of how I got like, where I am now with like FMs and stuff. Like for all the things that I do with FM, I've reached a point where I know pretty much what all it's all going to sound like, except for sort of like, seriously experimental shit. But like to the point where I don't even have presets, I just do it. But like yeah. for this this shit, like I don't. I have yet to really delve into filters as a, as a thing. 
Yeah, the, the filtering is really the just the rid of all that movement. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, it's it's nice when you when you combine a, a number of different sounds. Usually, like for example, in that last track, uh, Infiltrate, there's like a combination of sounds that are more like blocks of audio, and then they're combined with more moving sounds, and it's like a nice offset. If you had a bunch of tracks with just a bunch of stuff moving around the whole time, I feel like it would not be as pleasing to the ear. But yeah, yeah. Those, those bases are useful. You get into like the super, super duper ultra neuro tech territory where like Belaine stuff where it's like only effects. <laughs> yeah, it's stuff kind of gets very still cool. This isn't working out the way I want it to. Huh. I don't know what's up. But mm. our uh, <laughs> our buddy uh, Eternity is in here too. He actually remixed our track called Shackle. That's really an interesting take. He makes like a lot of uh, soulful kind of hip hop stuff, and his spin on it is really interesting. But we had, uh, and back when we went to our community college, we opened up a, a, an electronic music club, and uh, like he, we had met him there, and we actually we had people come into uh, our club meetings, and we did basically what you do, right? Like you, you, you teach people how to make sounds. Like we tried to do that to the best of our ability, and combined, combined also with DJing. So we like played shows. Um, and we played like in our school too, like like in the main lobby where everybody kind of just walked around and hung out. Like we we DJed there and played our crazy music and got weird looks, but it was fun. <laughs> Man, that was that's kind of what happened to me in high school. Like it wasn't a club as such. It was a this weird. There's a, there's a time period like in between semesters where uh, we take two weeks, two or three weeks to only do one thing. And my one thing was uh, music production, electronic music production, and that's where I was introduced to FL Studio, FL Three. Because <laughs> this was nice. two thousand four. <laughs> and like, Damn. they also had Reason Two, which I tried to use and I got nowhere with. Because <laughs> Reason. Yeah, we're we're still kind of in the boat with Reason Five, trying to figure out things. You know. That's your sound, by the way. Oh uh, yes, being drastically time stripped. <laughs> this is actually something I've been doing recently, where I'll resample a sound, and it's, but instead of keeping it its original audio, I'll turn the scale off on Harmer so that it's basically only playing the note. And then if you turn the sharpness down also to zero, it, it makes it very, very much like the original wave. And if you do it with certain sounds in certain ways, it kind of sounds very like Joe Fordish. Well, recent Joe Fordish with the sort of uh, RM kind of sound he has. Yeah. Except that you also have control over the pitch directly. Right. Yeah, if you, if you listen to like his, uh, I think it's called Mission, he has some similar yeah. sounds to actually what you're working with right now. That's more or less what I was referring Those to. Like that, I, like It sounds to me like it's some kind of uh, application of ring modulation because it's the same It's the same pitch. It's just, it sounds spacier like within each period of the wave oscillation. That's what it sounds like to me. And mm -hmm. like, I, know, I know he uses Massive primarily. And there is ring modulation in Massive, so it's, that makes sense. But uh, it's not right. something I've ever been able to do directly, like the way that he does. Nice. Another thing I think is like worth mentioning is like when you take these sounds um, and you and you combine them with uh, Folly or Foley, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it Foley. right. Basically, real recordings of whatever, like meat sizzling or Water. like dipping your hands in 
barbecue sauce or stir in oatmeal or water, like whatever, you can make things sound like really fresh. Because like the problem is when you resample things is you start removing frequencies, especially like healthy high end, and mm -hmm. that high end starts to get distorted and not sound very good. But um, once you layer like all those sounds I was mentioning with fresh high end, it makes the sound much more uh, just much more full, much more refreshing. Yeah, that's and, kind and of like what you, Belaine does. Yeah, Belaine, and you can hear it also in uh, Tetsuo's Redemption. I think mm. that was what the tutorial request was. Yep. Uh, you can definitely hear in that in the introduction just before the chorus. Um, there's there's quite a bit of like water probably layered with the bass. It sounds really nice. Yeah, that's not something that I've attempted yet. Is that sort of thing? Although a long time ago, well, not that long. I guess a couple of years ago, there was a guy that had done a tutorial on YouTube about granulizing things, and it was a tutorial about taking those kinds of sounds, like he he like water going down a drain or plastic stretching that kind of thing, and then granulizing it to create those textures. And it was all about like that kind of, like that sort of texture. And that's, a lot of people uh, mentioned that when I first started doing tutorials, they were like, oh, it's kind of like this sort of thing. I'm like, yeah, except only actually bases. And, um, but like the point of that kind of stuff is like, as you're saying, is to layer it in there on top of like your sampled sounds to kind of bring back the texture in it. And like Belaine goes like a whole fucking other world about it. His whole, he's like fucking, uh, almost, almost a Montauban level, like yeah. I, and it's so it's so cool to hear if you look at or if you ever read anything about how Amon does his stuff. Um, it's like his recording setup is so ridiculous. Like it's such great quality. I love that. It's it is. But crazy. I think I think somebody had actually asked if we could explain how to actually go about layering sounds like such as the water and the grease or whatever you want to use with those sounds. Um, actually, the sounds that were in that tutorial, um, we had a similar project and we actually have a track that's based off of it, so I could post that. It's another unreleased bit, but um, I think it provides a good example, especially in the introduction where you can use textures um, to accentuate your sounds and make things sound interesting. Yeah. Um, so here's here's the link to that track. Um, just don't go about sharing it right now. Um, it's it's a unreleased bit, but people on the stream should be able to hear it. Um, basically, um, we oh, recorded a yes. bunch of orange peels really close to the microphones. Like peeling an orange has some really interesting textures, and also stirring some oatmeal it sounds like nice and thick. And you put those two things together, it's like this really, really interesting, I don't know, thick mesh of awesomeness. And then you combine that with um, all the bass sounds. It sounds pretty interesting. So um, but yeah, that you'd track uh, kind of brings it out. Yeah. Earlier you'd mentioned um, dipping your hand in barbecue sauce. Is that, that was an oddly specific suggestion. Is that born of experience? <laughs> um... Yeah, I mean, when, I'm, when you do barbecue sauce, it also helps to have the chicken. Um, <laughs> so if you start like, so if you start squeezing the chicken with the barbecue sauce, it's like the raw chicken. It's a raw chicken, not cooked chicken. Raw chicken. You start squeezing it really close to the microphone. Man, it's just this like the, it's just like the thickest, thickest thing, and we use. We use the uh, sweet baby raised barbecue sauce, so you can actually you actually eat the uh, eat the barbecue sauce when you're done if you want. Well, I wouldn't recommend it just because it's a raw chicken. We're 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 actually epic meal time now. In case you guys missed missed the uh, transition, <laughs> epic meal time. Yeah, that's my that's my recommendation of the day though is uh, a sweet baby raised barbecue sauce. It's really, really good. I got the bathroom. I'm just messing around with the gran the granulizer. <laughs>
Uh, yeah. Okay, so we've got about uh, 15 minutes left until the stream ends, so let's have um, questions from the chat, and then we'll close out with that. I feel like this has gone very well. I enjoy that. I have learned things. I have actually learned things. Odeka has taught us things. Let's bring, let's bring back the, uh, the video. Let's switch yourselves back to, um, to video. Oh, yeah. Will do. And I'll, I'll bring, bring up the, the, the thingy with the, the thingy. All right, there's you guys. Nice. And then go, exploit, go. All right, here, let me get the microphone. All right. Uh, Tilted properly. Angular. Green region. Yoink. Yeah. Uh, someone had asked if we side chain, side chain our drums. Yeah. Uh, like if you if you're asking, well, there's there's two ways you could interpret that question. If you're asking if we side chain certain parts of our drums with other parts of the drum, yes. And if we side chain sounds to the drums, that's also a yes. So I guess maybe I could explain that a little bit more. Like you could take um, like a stereoed, stereoized kind of noise tail from a snare and actually side chain that high mid range, most more so the high end with the fundamental hit of the snare. Um, if you do that, it actually, it actually sounds um, more explosive, right? So you have this, you have this fundamental hit of the drum, and then a huge explosion of noise and uh, stereo noise that makes it sound huge. So like fundamental hit, and then poof, oh, I hit the microphone. Sorry. Like that. That's the fundamental <laughs> hit. Bam. Yeah, but if when you do that, like it makes a very explosive sounding snare. Um, and then yeah, side chaining things to drums like uh, like your bass and whatever else that you want to have like not over like overshadow the drums. Um, what we used to do earlier is actually like side chain the entire synth to the drum, but the problem with doing that is you kind of it, it you kind of like ruin how well the bass comes through, especially like in a drum and bass track where you have drums like hitting all over the place very quickly. Um, every drum. It's going to be, your bass is going to be constantly like getting drowned by the sound of your drum side chain. So to avoid that and still be able to have your drums come through clean, uh, one thing you can do is actually just kind of side chain uh, the low end frequency of your bass sound to the kick. So like if you have a kick where most of the frequencies are located at 100 hertz, and that's where the primary punch comes through. And <laughs> oh, he's got the shades on. Um, sort of. Uh, if you so you have you have uh, you have like the fun, you have like the most power coming from 100 hertz in your kick drum, and uh, you want your bass to come through well. You could simply side chain 100 hertz and lower. Um, and at that point, you're going to be able to hear the low end of the kick come through nice and clean. Um, the punch shouldn't be too affected. And then at that time, you know, you're going to be able to play the audio of the of the synth with the drum, and it's still all going to come and hit at the same time. So you're not going to have that like stupid pulsing sound where it's constantly buried under drums. You'll be able to have the bass running smoothly while your drums go, but your drums are still hitting well. Yeah, that's the, that that's the thing about sense. like neuro mixing that I find interesting is that um, born born of like sort of old school drum and bass kind of thing is that the mixing isn't as it's it's super crushed, but it's not the kind of crushed that like modern EDM is, where like everything is side chained, like the kick and the snare, for, like dubstep or like any any kind of one twenty eight genre um, or boomaton, as the guys keep mentioning, which I do like. I'm okay with it. I like the genre, but. Um, because like when I make those kinds of stuff, I will just crush everything to like the kick and whatever, and I'll be fine. But um, I noticed that drum and bass, and especially like the neuro style of drum and bass, doesn't really sound good when you do that. Like if you crush everything, like it'll work, like it'll sound nice and super loud and whatever, but it won't have the right texture, like pretty much as they're describing. And like it's almost like you have to apply more traditional methods of mixing, where you are mostly fitting things together through EQ adjustments than you are like cheating with the idea of uh side chaining so like 
I always thought that was weird that that genre, which I consider to be like a, a harder hitting thing than most other other genres, is actually mixed more sensibly. Right. Yeah, you're not really, um, and it, it all. I mean, it all depends on what the style of the track is too. I mean, definitely for drum and bass, you want to take that, you want to take that more traditional approach to mixing, um, because things are just going faster. So you have more drums that need to come through well in a given bar than say a, a dubstep track or a glitch hop track even. Yeah, that's like those time. are those are very like square rhythms in glitch hop and dubstep, and they're like very, uh, very easy, much easier to mix, I think, than a drum and bass track, right? Because it's just, there's less going on with drums. Yeah. And drums seem to be most effective when you're trying to uh, master, especially. Um, so you need to make sure that everything is, is mixed cleanly before you begin the compression process on the master channel. Yeah. What other questions do we got? Questions? I think someone had asked. Someone had asked if it's necessary to fill up the entire spectrum when you have everything going on. Um, I guess what you would mean by that is like during the during the chorus section or the drop. Um, I mean, it depends on what the style of the track is. Again, if you listen to like Technion's uh, tracks, like. Uh, like Behemoth, for instance, if you look at the the frequency spectrum on that, uh, there's not too much mid-range. Um, and that's just the nature of the sound of the track, right? Because if you boost the mid-range in that track, it actually it sounds really weird. Um, so, no, I mean, it just all depends on the sound that you're going for. Um, some good things to do to get an idea of what sp uh, spectrum should look like is take is take uh, a noisy track or something and just put that in your DAW and look at it and see how that matches up to your track. And if if you have too much high end or low end or whatever, um, then that's adjustments that you should try and make because I think noisia is a, a, a good benchmark. I think everybody could agree that noisia is a good benchmark to use for mixing your track properly. So depend that, yeah, to a certain extent, or at least a good benchmark for the idea that, um, especially in their older stuff, how much of a fuck you don't have to give about mixing, because a lot of their super old stuff sounds the way it does because it is because the, when they were making it, it clips like that's just what it does, and it sounds cool. Like I <laughs> like the sound, and I do that too. Like I make my stuff clip. It's not a mistake. I'm doing it on purpose, but like. Um, Especially, they, they, they mean, they can do, like, legitimately impressive, like, technically impressive mixes, especially, like, modern times. Like, Tommy's theme is a pretty good example of that. Um, uh, well, the, 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 the Devil May Cry stuff that they had done recently it was also, like, a really, really well done. So, I look at stuff like that. Yeah, I guess, oh. right. I guess more so what I was, what I was getting at is, like, they, they have frequently played on like large systems and whatnot. Mm. And I guess the most, mm. like the most troubling thing for, uh, for everyone really is getting a good grasp on what is too much treble or too much or too little or how much, how, which my base levels be like. And like, those are things that I, I think are a little bit more objective, uh, yeah. than others. Like if your song has too much bass, that's bad. Or if your song has too much treble, that's bad. It's not going to sound pleasing to the ear. So, I, I think it's just good to reference those things for for that, like just for that aspect of mixing. Just make sure your treble isn't making your ears bleed or your bass isn't like masking everything else in your track. <laughs> yeah, someone had asked um, if I would ever make a hip-hop track, and I totally did. I mean, I, I, I started out being a hip-hop producer, but um, I can't fucking find this track. It was I called it Fake Hop because um, I had long since stopped, like, trying to do hip-hop produ production. I actually got rid of a whole, foot, like, just super huge amount of samples and crap that I had that were geared towards that kind of thing, like, a whole bunch of breaks and, like, drums and other, like, effects and stuff. And uh, so, like, one day I decided I wanted to, I wanted to make a hip-hop track again, but I didn't have any of my stuff. So I all I had was, like, 
Superior Drummer and like East West Quantum Leap sample libraries. And the whole thing about the like, hip hop and like the, the kind that I like is that it has that sort of old school like recorded vinyl record feel, but Superior Drummer and East West are all like perfectly recorded, excellently captured things. Don't really sound right. Like you can make it sound okay, it could be a cool song, but it won't sound right. And I wanted to make oh, I think this is it. Ha! No, it was, what I ended up doing was I recorded loops and then I run, run them out and then I just like m messed with them to make them sound old and bad. And uh, I have all the parts. These are all. I have all the. the basically, the, like. Like, oh, this is actually the track, I think. The thing is that those were all sampled instruments, like the bass, the strings, the piano. I made all those parts, but I made them in like the wrong time signatures and the wrong tempos and crap, so that I had to cut them up to make them fit the track. And I thought that was a fun experiment. And now I closed the folder, so I have no idea where that is. I'll never be able to find it again. Yeah. All right, so who's got a question, one more question for um, Odeka? Odeka's questions. Yeah, so, so, someone had a pretty good question about gluing drums together. Um, there's a, there's a lot of different ways I think that you can drew, you can, uh, glue everything together. Um, one of the ways is, or to make it sound full rather is to, um, if you look at our tutorial that we did, uh, that Seamless just put up, there's a, there's a, a frequency splitting demonstration in Patcher. Um, you can take your drums and, uh, you can actually split different parts of them. So like, you could uh, you could split um, the high end and maybe some high mids and make it a little bit more reverbed or something, and also more importantly stereoize them if you want to make it sound larger. Um, and then on top of that, um, we uh, we like to use camel fat quite a bit and a slight amount of saturation, uh, whether it be um, like tube or the mechanical. Uh, type of distortion that are available in that plugin, and a slight amount of bit crushing. Um, bit crushing is another cool way to glue things together because it does. I do, this is kind of through experimentation. It does happen to create just a little bit of noise, um, and so if you uh, if you have this little bit of noise going on with your drums, and then maybe add a tad of compression on top of that, it does kind of help everything stick together. It's definitely one of a couple of methods that you can make things stick together. I like. Also, I mean, layering, layering like basic samples of vinyl noise or whatever, kind of like you were doing, uh, kind of going after that, that older sounding style of drums, mm. like, like those. That's a great way. It's just throwing noise on top of your on top of your drums. It makes everything sound more full. Yeah, there was a. Uh, I had used a free plugin. I don't remember what it, what it was called, but it was it, its whole point was that it generated uh, record noise. It had all kinds of like adjustments for like specific kinds of noise. It had like this is the needle sound, this is the pop sound, this is the hiss sound, this is the other the whole bunch of other sounds, and then you could like level it out and like it, it adjust randomness. And oh yeah, was, I think there is ooh. yeah there is one. I can't remember who the company is that makes it, it like, but it was like mil 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 it had like, a bunch of L's and I's and M in it. Like that was the name of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't remember, I don't remember anything about what it actually was. But if, if I'm sure, if you Google just like vinyl generator, it might be isotope vinyl. That sounds like something that they bought and then rebranded. So that might be that might be the thing. Yeah. So yeah, there's a few people hinting saying that there is a. I do not own a, I do not own a Moog, and I'm just very sad that that word is pronounced Moog. <laughs> it's spelled Moog. Is it Moog? I thought it was. No, it's I thought it was Moog. Moog. They call it Moog. It's a guy's name, Moog. Yeah. <laughs> it like, I'm just. It just depresses me that that's that's how it's pronounced. Well, I mean, you don't you don't have to you don't have to conform to that pronunciation. I know. Call it Moog. 
I know. I mean, I do that for other things. Think- like the example I bring up all the time is I, I, I used to be a big EverQuest player and uh, they had a, had a zone, a, whole, a world, a planet, a moon. It was called Lucelin. It was spelled L-U-C-L-I-N. And I read that as Lucelin, which sounds like a cool name. And but they pronounced it Lucklin. That's how they pronounced it. And like after like years and years and years of not ever pronouncing it like to anyone except for like my mom, because she also plays every question. She still does actually. And then like one day there's a dev conference and the EQ developers say it's Lucklin. I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. we're out of time. Uh, let's. Uh, I was about to say, let's have a round of applause for our deck up. Like you can, you can clap if you want. No one's gonna hear you. We'll hear it in our souls. <laughs> yeah. Virtual, virtual clap. Virtual All right, clap. yeah, that was this was awesome. So this was, uh, yeah, this was really fun. Um, there was one more. There was one more question. I think it's a good one. Um, what games do we play? These are games that you're gonna want to check out if you haven't played them. You want to check out Dark Souls, Demon Souls. Those are all really good. Uh, Age of Empires is a personal favorite, and oh, yes. uh, Zelda Assassin's Creed. Those are all fantastic games that we enjoy playing. Minecraft. And Minecraft. How could Minecraft. I forget that? Minecraft. Minecraft. Indeed. So if you yeah. if you weren't here for the whole stream, um, I'm going to upload it onto YouTube, as I do all the other streams. So if you missed any of my other streams, they're all on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash seamlessr, which is funny to say right now because you guys will see that, but then... It'll be on YouTube, and I'll just be letting people know that I'm watching it on YouTube. But my channel is, because even though they're already there, but that's okay. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.